Being in control of your money is one of the most important life skills we can learn today. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build this simple, effective finance tracker in Excel or Google Sheets that lets you keep an eye on every dollar. You can analyze by category by month and year on year. And the best part is you can set it up in less than 15 minutes and the report automatically updates. Now, if English isn't your first language or the pace is too fast, you can use the cog icon in the bottom right of the video to change the playback speed. You can also download a free copy of the file from the link in the video description or pinned comment. All right, let's dive in. The first thing we need to do is create a list of income and expenses we expect to have. You can see I've started a list of subcategories, which I've then organized into larger categories to help us analyze spending. And then I have a column that marks them as expense or income. And we've got one here for bank transfers, which we aren't going to report. And before I can add any more items, I'm going to format this as an Excel table with the keyboard shortcut Control T. My table has headers, I'll click OK. And then let's just give it a subtle format in this gray stripe. You can see on the table design tab, this is table two. Let's rename it categories and that'll just make it easy to reference. Now this list is fully customizable. I'll add another variable for vacation and that's going to be an expense. And notice when you enter it on the very next available row, the table expands to include it in its range. And this means that anything referencing this table will automatically be able to see that new item. No further editing of formulas, etc. required. Now we'll be referencing the subcategories in a drop down list. And to enable that to auto update when new subcategories are added, I'm going to define that column as a name. We do that on the formulas tab and then define name. We'll call it subcategories. And you can see here it refers to the categories table subcategory column. I click OK. Now, note if you're using Google Sheets, you don't have to define a name for the subcategory column. Next, we need to classify our bank transactions with a subcategory. Now, I've got a table here with some dummy data, but you copy and paste the transactions in from a bank statement for the date, description, debit, and credit columns. And I recommend you also enter the account that the transactions relate to. And this allows you to record multiple accounts in the one table, which is handy if you want to filter the data and look at a specific account. Next, I'm going to add a formula that takes the income minus the expenses or the credits minus the debits. This is just going to give me one column containing all of the values, which I'm going to use in the report. You can see the income is positive and the expenses are negative. Next, I need to set up the drop down list for the subcategory and that will enable us to understand where our money is going. I'm just going to select the cells in the subcategory column. And then on the data tab, I've got data validation. Here I want a list. And for the source, it's going to be the name I set up for the subcategories. Now, if you can't remember what the name was, press the F3 key, brings up the names, select it, click OK. And now I can click OK. And you'll notice now I have a drop down list so I can classify each of the rows. This is going to be interest earned. This one is a bank transfer. And I'll just pause while I do the rest. Next, I can use the XLOOKUP or VLOOKUP function to look up the subcategory in the categories table in the subcategory column and return the category. And if it's not found, it'll be because I haven't assigned a subcategory. So we can put the message add subcategory in here, close parentheses on XLOOKUP. There's my categories. Let's repeat for the category type. So again, we're going to look up the subcategory, the categories table, subcategory column, and return the category type. And if it's not found, it'll be because we need to add a subcategory. Close double quotes, close parentheses, and there's my category type. Okay. The hard work is done here. Each month, all you'll need to do is go to the very bottom of the table and on the very next row, add in your new data, or you can copy them in from your bank statement, and then you can assign them with a subcategory. Now we're ready to build the report, which is also a one-off job because once it's set up, you can update it with the click of one button. I'll use pivot tables to rapidly build the report. Now, don't worry if you haven't used pivot tables before. They're super easy when the data is structured correctly as it is here. Now on the inset tab of the ribbon, pivot table, I'm going to put it on an existing worksheet, which I've got set up here. 
and I'll pop it in this cell. Click OK. Let's grab the field list and make it a bit bigger. So here I want the category type in the filters. And then I want to look at the categories, subcategories, and my income slash expense. And the filter here, I only want to see income. Click OK. And let's right click and we'll sort this from largest to smallest. I'm going to add the income and expense again. I'm going to use this one to add in some bars to create a bar chart. On the home tab of the ribbon, we'll use conditional formatting data bars and I'll go with a solid fill. Let's go back into the conditional formatting manage rules dialog and double click the rule to edit it. Here I want to apply it to all cells showing sum of income expense values for subcategory. Let's change the color to green. That'll be the color for our income and click OK and OK. All right. With the bar there, I need to hide all of the text in this column so that we can just see the bar. And I'll use a custom number format to do that. So control one to open the formatting dialog box on the number tab, custom. And in here, just type in three semicolons that will hide all of the text and numbers in the column. Click OK. And now we just have our bar that represents the size of the values for the subcategories. Now, one more thing I want to do is change the heading here to say income. And I'll go to the pivot table analyze tab. We'll turn off field headers. And let's right click the pivot table and go into pivot table options. I'm going to turn off auto fit column widths on update. That will just prevent the pivot tables adjusting the column widths constantly. I'll click OK. And that pivot table is done. One thing I might do though is just move it down to row four. I'll copy this pivot table and paste it here. And we're going to modify this for the expenses. Click OK. Now for this one, I don't want the subcategories. Let's change this to expense and let's right click and sort them smallest to largest. Now we need to add the conditional formatting again. So conditional formatting, data bars solid fill and then we need to go in and manage the rules double click to edit the rule we're going to put it on all cells showing income and expense values for category and then in negative value and axis i want the fill color to be pink for my negative values and then the bar direction i want right to left this is going to be counterintuitive but because we're dealing with negative values we want to flip it i'll click ok and ok and there's our expenses. Now, one more thing I'll do is on the design tab, we'll format the pivot table in pink in keeping with the color for our negatives. Now I'm just going to add income and expenses again. And this one, I'm going to right click, show values as percentage of grand total. Let's change this to percent of total. And I'm just going to align all of these headings to the right in line with the numbers. All right, that's that one done. Let's copy that pivot table and paste it here. This one's going to give us more details. So we're going to add back in the subcategory. And instead of having the bars on the category level, we'll go in and we'll clear the rules from this pivot table. And then we'll add them back in for the subcategories. Data bars. And then let's go in and manage the rules. Double click to edit. So again, all cells showing income expense for subcategory and then negative value and access. I want pink. Click OK. Bar direction right to left. That's that done. And then let's right click these values and we'll sort them smallest to largest as well. So now we have our expenses by category and at the subcategory level. OK, next I'll copy this pivot table again pasting it here. We're going to modify it to show the data by month. So let's get rid of subcategory and category. And this time we want dates. Now Excel automatically groups the dates. If I right click and go into group, you can see they're grouped by days and months. I want them grouped by months and years because I want to allow for more years to be added to my data. So I'll click OK there. Now we've got it by year and month. Let's add the conditional formatting, data bars, solid fill. Go back in and manage the rules. Double click to edit. Apply it to all values for months. Let's change the color to green. And that's done. 
All right, let's copy this one for our expenses. So instead of income, we want expense. And we need to go in and fix the conditional formatting. Double click, negative value and access. So it should be pink. And we want the bar direction right to left. Click OK, OK. All right, let's just change this to expense. And we'll change the pivot table design to pink. All right, copy this one more time. And I'll paste it here. This one's going to show us our net savings. So we want to select multiple items, expense and income. So this is our income minus our expenses. So we'll call this net savings. And that one's done as well. Of course, this assumes you're not spending more than you're making. If you are spending more than you're making, then you'll need to rename that net loss. Okay, that's the reports done. But to enable you to filter by year or month, let's insert some slices which we can do from the Insert tab, Slicer. Make sure you've got one of the pivot tables selected before clicking Slicer. And I want slices for months and years. Click OK. Select them both and I'll just move them up here and quickly, roughly resize them. And we'll put years to the left. Now you'll notice with the Years Slicer that we've got these two buttons, so less than and greater than dates. That happens automatically when you group dates in pivot tables. So you can right click the slicer, go into the settings at the very bottom. And then here, let's change the header to just say year. And I'll check the box to hide items with no data. That'll get rid of these buttons. Click OK, that one's done. Let's repeat for the months. Go into the settings at the bottom. We'll change it to month and hide items with no data. Click OK. And while I've got the month slicer selected, I'm going to give it two columns. And you can see at the bottom, we've got space for November and December. And as we add more years, we've got plenty of room for more buttons for those future years. The next thing we need to do is connect these slices to all of the pivot tables that we want these slices to filter. So right click on the year slicer, report connections. Here, I want to connect it to all of the pivot tables. So let's check all of them. Click OK. Now with the month slicer, I don't want to filter these pivot tables at the bottom. They already have the months split out, so it wouldn't make sense to filter it by month. So we need to find the names of the pivot tables at the top. You can do that on the pivot table analyze tab. Here we can see this one's called pivot table seven, this one's pivot table nine, and this one's pivot table 10. So we need seven, nine, and 10. We'll go back into the report connections for the month slicer. And here I want seven, nine, and 10. Click OK. Now, if I select January in the month slicer, you can see these three pivot tables change. And as I choose different months or ranges of months, they update accordingly. Now, I only have a year's worth of data, so there's no point demoing the year slicer. It won't make any difference at this stage. But as you add more data to your bank transactions table, I add it to the bottom here and I go into 2026 then this slicer is automatically going to pick up that year. Speaking of adding new data, let's look at how we can automatically update this report. I've got some data here for November. So I'm just going to select it, Control C to copy, go back to my bank transactions. On the very next row, Control V to paste. You can see that the table automatically grows and it's copied down the formula for my income and expense and my category and category type. So that's all I need to do. Obviously, when you paste in your bank statements, you're going to need to go through and add your subcategories. Once you've done that, go back to the report, go to the data tab of the ribbon, keep an eye on these pivot tables down here. They're going to include November's date and this slicer for the months will also include it. Click the refresh all button and that's it. Your report is now up to date. So you can see it's super quick and easy. Let's finish it off with a heading. We'll go to the Home tab, we'll give it some fill color. Control 1, let's go in and give it a border. We'll give it a dark green thick border on the bottom. We'll call this Income and Expenditure Dashboard. Let's make the font bigger. And we'll also make it green in keeping with the theme. Now another thing we can do is add some headline figures up here. We'll just reference the pivot table. So this is going to be my income. This is my expense. And if I add them together, I get my net savings. 
Let's just format these as a currency with no decimal places and we'll make them a bit bigger as well. We'll color code them in keeping with green for income and pink for expenses. Now we need to give them some labels. So we'll insert a text box. Let's draw it in above here. So this is going to be my income. Let's just format it and we'll make it the same color green. And on the shape formatting tab, I'm going to get rid of the outline and the shape fill. And let's just center it a little bit above the value. Holding down control and shift, I'm just going to copy it across for my net savings. And once more for my expenses. And this one, I just need to color code in the same pink color. Okay. One final embellishment. I'm just going to insert an icon that represents money. We'll go with this abacus here. Insert. Let's bring it over. I'm going to put it here to the left. We'll color it in the same dark green and let's just make it smaller to fit in the space. And then I'll move the heading over to the right. And with that, we can see where our income comes from, where our expenses are how our income and expenses trend over time, and we get a snapshot of our position at the top. This super easy tracker helps you understand where your money goes each month, giving you the power to make smarter financial decisions. The next step, setting clear goals. In my next video, I'll show you how to compare your actual spending to budget, keeping you on track to achieve those goals. It's a must watch for anyone serious about mastering their personal finances. I'll see you there.